This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. Hello, my name is Brian Allgaier, the design director at Insomniac Games. These floating spherical monstrosities are the elusive gravity spheres, which were originally going to be included in Silver City. They proved to be too difficult, and a bit nauseating, to be included. They are preserved here for posterity. Swing shot up to try running around one, and then swing shot again to get off the sphere. Hi there, my name is Tim Trespass. I'm a gameplay programmer here at Insomniac Games. I'm a Leo from Washington, D.C. I like anime and shiny objects. This car was originally going to be included in the battle with the giant robot on Snivlak. Unfortunately, its lack of heavy weaponry proved its bane. It now calls the Insomniac Museum its home. the animation director here at Insomniac Games. The three-headed Hydra was a big cut from Ratchet and Clank 1. It was originally intended as a mini-boss on Pokitaru. Ratchet battled this beast whilst riding a boat through blowfish-infested waters. However, it didn't end up being that much fun at all. My name is Chris Town, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. Here at Insomniac, we're so hopped up on caffeine that we bounce off the walls! You can do the same with these gravity ramps! My name is Tony Garcia and I'm a programmer at Insomniac Games. This little demonstration allows you to create your own shot effect. Using the magic of debug technology, you can edit the shot's size and color, and then watch the bandit shoot it at the block man. Don't feel too sorry for the block man though, he's evil.
Tony Garcia here. This wonder of an explosion was created especially for Ratchet and Clank 2. Its extreme versatility allowed it to creep into many different places in the game. You'll even see it in the electrolyzer puzzles. Stand on the blue pad to make your own explosions. Hello, this is Pedro Hastinas. I am a gameplay programmer at Insomniac Games. This little widget was used to test our new chunk system. We lovingly call it the corn system. Notice how all the breakables in this game are much prettier? Well, that's corn working hard for you. Give it a whack and see what it does. Mike Stout here. Fear the random robot NPC. This robot never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1 because of the fabled Day of Poultry, when chickens swarmed over our offices and pecked the computer, holding this mechanical darling to pieces. We were able to retrieve her eventually, though. Mike Stout here. Have you ever wanted to create your own infiltrator puzzle? Well, now you can. Just stand on the blue pad and play around with the values a bit. Confound your friends and amaze your enemies. Hello, I'm Carl Grande, the QA manager here at Insomnia Games. This gadget was originally intended for Ratchet and Clank 1. Unfortunately, it didn't make the cut, and so never saw the light of day. It now makes its home here at Insomniac Museum, gone but not forgotten. Chris here. This helmet was the original model for the Hollow Guys gadget in Ratchet and Clank 1. It was eventually changed to the handheld model you see in the finished game for reasons unknown. However, we once again suspect it was due to the squirrels with hacksaws. My name is Corey Stockton and I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This monstrous robotic squid was created for one of the Ratchet and Clank 2 prototype levels. Since that level never made it into the finished game, however, neither did poor Squiddy.
Hey, this is Peter again. These teleporters were originally intended to go into several of the levels. Due to time constraints, however, they were eventually cut. Brian Allgaier here. These escalating rows of blocks were used when we were in the early stages of creating Ratchet & Clank 1. They were used to test Ratchet's jump heights and jump distances to see which would be the most fun. Brian Allgaier here. These walls, which range from narrow to wide, were used to test wall kick distances for the original Ratchet and Clank. Brian Allgaier here. These ramps get steeper and steeper as you go on. They were used to test how Ratchet's feet respond to different floor angles. It also helped establish that a 45 degree angle was the sharpest that Ratchet should be able to walk up. Tony Garcia here. Using these three blue pads, you can edit the three particle effects in the center of the room. Go ahead, play around with them. You can achieve some truly great effects this way. Hey, this is Peter again. This was created to test screen buffer effects. Screen buffer effects are used to create things like distortion bubbles and heat hazing. This, however, ends up looking like a hall of mirrors. Can you guess why?
Hey, this is Peter again. This dummy was created to test the new reaction system which we added to Ratchet & Clank 2. With this system, enemies would always be sure to react appropriately to being damaged without a ton of hassle. Go ahead and hit him. He won't mind. Corey here. You may recognize this drill from Ratchet & Clank 1. It was held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of raritanium. This is originally a weapon called the Revolverator. Ratchet would strike enemies with it and then spin them over his head. Hey, it's Tim. This monstrosity was intended to be a boss battle fought on the jet ski gadget. Seeing as the jet ski never made it in Ratchet and Clank, however, neither did this boss. May he rest in pieces. Hi, my name is Sean Whistler, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. This guy was originally intended to be an enemy in the ill-fated jet ski level that never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1. A moment of silence, please, for this gentle giant, torn down in his prime. Sean here. Don't worry, Ratchet. You wouldn't have had to fight this monster even if he did make it into the game. This giant bug ship was intended to act as scenery only, flying from place to place to ensure high detail on buildings, while leaving the play area open. Greetings, this is Oliver Wayne, the animation director at Insomniac Games doing an atrocious British accent. This is the original Gadgetron vendor from Ratchet & Clank 1. The official reason it was cut had something to do with saving memory. The real reason has a lot to do with squirrels, hacksaws, and our lawyers. I can say no more, because I am no longer able to do this accent. Hi, I'm Leslie Matheson. I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This was intended to be the water system for Ratchet & Clank. However, as even this little patch of water taxes the game engine to its limits, a modified and severely optimized form was what eventually made it into the game. To see this patch in action, press circle. 